All right, we got a, a couple of guests here in the studio. We got Rick Parker and Mort Todd, and uh, they've got an event coming up starting tomorrow night, isn't it? Uh, down at the uh, Maine Historical Society. Yeah, first Friday opening. Hey, wait a minute. I suppose we ought to pull up the microphones here. All right, there we got one. All Hello. right. <laughs> Hello. There we go. Bring up the audio. All right, we got more there, Mort. So what's going on? Yeah, it's uh, starting tomorrow, first Friday, at the Maine Historical Society. They're having a, an exhibit of Maine comic artists, and uh, it's going to run through till the end of March. Yeah, okay, and then it's a part of First Friday. It's, it's a free show for everybody to come in that day. So Indeed. Now, are there's going to be a, a number of the actual artists hanging out there I for the show? I would reckon, yeah. Yeah, but we're, me and Rick are the most important ones. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're just two of about twelve. Okay, so we got we got Rick Parker here too. So if you're not interested in talking to us, there'll be plenty of other options. <laughs> yeah, just looking at the flyer, I see there's a. Uh, uh, we can see. Uh, let me pull it up. Obviously, uh, Beavis and Butthead is uh, featured, and that Rick, you are. Uh, you did the artwork for uh, the Beavis and Butthead. I'm work? afraid so. <laughs> it's a dirty job, but somebody had to do it. Yes, yeah, you've got a uh, a long history. You want to just give a brief synopsis? Well, I was born in August of 19... Uh, a long history. Well, <laughs> no, I don't really want to give a long history. <laughs> okay, good. How about a short history? S- summarize we're, it We're here sentences. now, folks. That's all any of us have got. And then, That's right. I like the, uh, the graphic. It looks like uh, Mort... And uh, Rick riding on a motorcycle. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, I think that's Barack Obama. That uh, he does look a little bit like Mort. Mort does look kind of like Barack Obama, though. So what are you, Bernie Sanders? Huh? I'm yes, <laughs> uh, Colonel Sanders is usually what people say. Oh, oh, there you go. And then Mort, uh, you've got uh, now, uh, you've got a history that's pretty interesting with record covers oh, and yeah. uh, media companies and films and and whatnot. What's What's uh, what are you working on right now? Well, he's got to get that limo to pick us up at six <laughs> o'clock. It, it just pulled up. Wait a minute. <laughs> it's the one with the uh, heated pool in the back. But um, yeah, well, I, you know, I'm a local boy. Grew up in Yarmouth. Uh, mm-hmm. I got I started doing record covers while I was still in high school for like Steve Bader's and a lot of local mm-hmm. bands mm-hmm. and stuff like that. In fact, Jim just reminded me we. That we used to go down to Boston. We were at the Rat and hanging out with the real kids and stuff like that when we were dirty little teenagers. But, uh, yeah, I lived in New York for years and was editor at Marvel and blah, 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 and recently moved back. And I've started a small publishing company called Charlton Neo Comics, and we've got our, a new book coming out this week, Comic Shops Everywhere, called The Charlton Arrow. It's got a lot of great veteran talent and a lot of new new up-and-comers and you can check out all my books at morttodd.com. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a commercial. <laughs> right? Uh, this uh, has been brought to you by. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Morttodd.com, <laughs> did you say? <laughs> uh, uh, that's pretty funny. And I should, I got to say that, uh, you know, it, you did the artwork actually on a seven inch record I put out many years ago yep. for uh, my band, one of the local bands in the area, which was. Uh, what was the name of that band? Uh, Big Meat Hammer. Big so. Meat Hammer. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ooh. <laughs> that was a fun cover, too. Yeah, that is. A, it's a ahead of its time. Rather. Ahead yes. of its time. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I think I've done a few covers for some of the bands that you play fairly regularly here. Oh, yeah. You did a Back from the Grave. You mm-hmm. did all that whole series. Yeah, that first uh, cover I did for them is in the permanent collection of Cornell University's punk archive wow Who, whoever knew there was such a thing <laughs> <laughs> but it makes me sound real legit oh uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well i can understand that but uh, uh yeah, you are actually legit i remember uh you've you, you've done stuff uh didn't you do marvel music yep. series there I, I started uh the label which is doing pretty good now because they put out all their movie soundtracks so it's like doing really good Wish I had a piece of that. I was going to ask you if you get that. <laughs> did you get that check that they, that they didn't send? Yeah, but at, but at Marvel, yeah, I was putting out graphic novels of uh, bands uh, that I worked closely with, which was a f- real gas because I got to tour with like ACDC and you know hook up with tons of bands like uh, you know Kiss and Alice Cooper, and we did also did hip hop and uh, country and 
Wow. But, yeah, it was really fun. It was a, nice. it was quite a time. I had a great expense. Any account. gospel? No, but I did do a Marvel Christian comic once. Okay. I did uh, Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis, which we did as like a Big Daddy Roth, Rat, Rat Fink Christian comic, which was a gas. <laughs> So, all right. So now working in the industry like that, what are the what are the jobs? The main jobs that it, it's broken down into like uh, there's coffee boy, <laughs> coffee boy, and uh, the delivery boy, and uh, well, depending on what hat I'm wearing, inking and it's usually, penciling. The editor is usually the most important. No, except <laughs> unless you're not an editor, and then they're the least important. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, you got your writer, you got your penciler who does like the layouts, and you get your inker who does the finishes, and you got a letterer that does the lettering, and you got a colorist does the coloring, and then you got a like I said, editor and publisher which just don't have no idea what they're doing. And as long you, as they pay the sign those checks. And then you got the people in the suits, and they make all the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rick and I were both at Marvel for for some time, and I uh, was glad to see him when he arrived there. I thought, yeah. hey, finally they got somebody that uh, I can relate to. Well, what was funny is like one day Rick comes up to me and says, "Hey, I'm getting married, and I want you to come to the wedding." And I was like, "Yeah, sure. Where is it?" And he goes, I, "I'm married. Wait a minute." Yeah. And he Why goes, wasn't I informed of this? And he goes, "Oh, the wedding's in Falmouth, Maine." <laughs> and I was like, "What?" <laughs> Here we are in the big metropolis. That's the only reason I invited him, because I wasn't sure how to get there. <laughs> I get lost a lot. So Okay, so do you live in Falmouth now? Yes, sir, I do. Okay, so With my wife and my dog. Very good, very good. And uh, now this back to the show briefly. Uh, tell me a little bit more about what's happening at the Kapow event. Well, well that's what we're going to find out tomorrow yeah, night. Yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, we've only, you know, there are only a few pieces of piece that people have put up. I put mm -hmm. up, uh, I've got one piece, that print that I gave you, Jim, which has got, uh, like, Godzilla. Is that and a double-page spread? No, nah, it's a po poster print. Oh, that's great. But oh, it's got nice. all these giant monsters fighting in front of a Portland headlight. Does it have a lobster or a moose in it? Uh, a lobster, yeah, I see the lobster. I see the lobster. Yeah. There, that's the red thing, right? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Right down at Portland, uh, the headlight. Portland headlight, yeah. yeah. Very local art, and then I got a piece of zombie art that I did, and I got a Speed Racer comic that I used to do for the newspaper. What is it with you and zombies, anyway? It, I've got a long association. I don't know what it is. It was before it was hip. What do you think that... <laughs> well, I, I know I'm not supposed to be interviewing, but I have a question for him. Yes? Uh, what, what is it? Why do people like zombies, anyway? Well, I think there's very deep reasons for that because they can do whatever the heck they want, and uh, you know they you can't kill them because they're already dead. Exactly, and it's you know people can just relate with them because they're not monsters anymore. They're like they're just you later on. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad I asked that question. Uh, all I'm right. getting depressed if, here. Do you if, have if, any more water? <laughs> if you just drop it in, uh, we got more Todd uh, and uh, Rick, Rick Parker. Parker here. Uh, illustrators, d graphic designers, maybe graphic novels, comic book artists, and, uh, and delineators of films. sequential you've, stories. You've, more, you've worked on. I mean, I was, what is it? Walt Disney Films, Sesame Street, oh, yeah. MTV. You've done yep, done a lot of animation for all those companies. What was it like working with Walt? Well, he was a little <laughs> chilly. <laughs> I think I think that he has been frozen. So yep. at, at some point in the future, they will be bringing him back. Yep. And he, I predict he's not going to like computers. <laughs> well, it's the thing when you're a comic book artist, you need to find other work all the time. So I've done well, a lot of animation and storyboarding for TV commercials. and He that, likes to have those multiple income streams. That, that's, that's what I was noticing on both that. There's a lot of freelancing going on. Well, I mean, it's all uh, freelance. It's yeah, it's, a whole it, lot of freelancing going on. Come on, on the baby. And Rick, I, Rick, I, did I see you even? Uh, Always wanted to sing on the radio. Now is, I, <laughs> no, I mean, it was only on the Internet. But is it true you were attempting to sell your entire artwork history? Yes. Right. I offered my work to anybody with a million dollars, and <laughs> there were no takers. Uh, well, you never know. Well, only, that was only like $6.12 per artwork. It was a great deal. All right, and then I was, all right, 
Well, I was well with all that, the MPG listeners, you'd probably get somebody now. So, so you I were so. you were doing the the bullpen bulletin. Now, That's it, right. And it was I was reading that it you were having six million comic books a week with your yeah, that, artwork. That in cartoon it? Wow. Yeah. that cartoon was in six million comic books a week, and the uh, executive <laughs> editor came over to me and told me I was the most published cartoonist <laughs> in America. And I, yesterday I asked somebody if they'd ever, ever heard of Gary Trudeau. And uh, they said no. I said, but you have heard of me, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rick Strip was always right under Stan Lee's soapbox. So it was prominent in, in every issue of every title that Marvel put out for years. I hated it because I had had to draw. Sometimes I had to draw superheroes, <laughs> and it was a superhero company. I just didn't think that was fair. <laughs> hmm. Well, and then uh, you you at one point were selling uh, hand drawn. Matchbooks? Yeah, that was a great um, experience. Uh, I lived in New York City for 25 years, and um, I guess I'd been there about 15 years when I decided I'll just I'll just go out onto the street and and try to sell uh, the drawings that I've done on these uh, matchbook covers, which I was picking up at the bottom of uh, cigarette machines. <laughs> I used to I used to play what with those. Yeah, I, exactly. I used to play with matches when I was a kid, and uh, as soon as I got a couple of pennies to my name, the very first thing I did was buy a pack of matches or box of matches. I thought, you know, you can have a lot of fun with matches. You can, you know, burn people's houses down, uh, set them on fire. Oh, mercy. Uh, I thought it was, you know, it gave me a sense of power that I really, I guess I needed that when I was a kid. But... Um, these matchbook covers that came out in the bottom of these cigarette machines were, uh, they were white and they were blank. And uh, we all know that nature abhors a vacuum. And certainly <laughs> artists abhor uh, white spaces. Most artists, if they see something uh, blank and white, they want to do something with it. And uh, I just picked up uh, one of these matchbooks and drew a funny face on the front of it. And then uh, there was the other side. So I flipped it over and I uh, made up a name for the character and, and wrote down as much as I could think of about the character. And uh, then I did about a thousand more of these things. And they're all over the place. Yeah, I got a bunch of them. <laughs> Everybody's got one. Every I made all my friends and relatives and then they're total strangers. But on the streets of New York, it's really interesting because um, you meet a lot of interesting people that uh, come by. <laughs> uh, I never would have met Jim Warren, probably, but Jim Warren stopped and talked to me. He was the publisher of Warren uh, Creepy and Eerie magazines and that were two magazines monsters. that, uh, yes, uh, that Mort and I both uh, really loved when we were in our formative years. Deformative. And, uh, and, and uh, he said, I've got a book. He said, I can see your work. Is, I've got something I think you'd be really good at, and I'm going to, what's your address? And I gave him my address, and he a couple of weeks later, a book arrived in the mail, and it was something like how to draw uh, people's penises or something like that. I Can thought, you say that on the radio? Yeah. Well, I guess if <laughs> I was, a, my feelings were a little bit hurt because I thought of myself as a, you know, a serious artist. But um, I set up one time. I'd set up in front of the Mary Boone Gallery on West Broadway, and I discovered that it, uh, what people liked to do was they liked seeing drawings of people's butts. <laughs> so um, I decided that uh, I would draw a picture of Mary Boone's butt. Oh. And, um, and some of the people that were working for Mary Boone came out uh, to lunch, and when they came back, they went across to see what I was doing. And uh, I think they bought those things, and uh, they, 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 they left. They were very happy when they left. And um, Mary Boone, if you are listening to this, I, I apologize. <laughs> but it looks better. Well, I won't say it looks better than um, your butt does now, but uh, oh my goodness, that's, you can strike really, that off the radio. Yeah, right? <laughs> no, I'm glad later. nobody's listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then, so you were very appropriate for Beavis and Butthead. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the drawings that I have in the show is is uh, Beavis and Butthead teach you how to draw a butt, and that's a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. It's a double page spread. Oh really. well then. Okay, then now we repeat where this is at. Where this, is this taking place? It's at, it's at the Maine Historical Society, which is uh, next to the Longfellow uh, House on uh, Congress Street at 489 Congress Street. And from 5 uh, p.m. tomorrow on is First Friday opening, and it'll be running there until March 31st. And the show is com is uh, curated by Amanda Skinner yes. of uh, University of New England fame. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And uh, 
Who else is going to be appearing there? You get a uh, Jay Piscopo. Jay Piscopo. Jay Piscopo. Uh, Lincoln Pierce, who Lincoln draws Pierce, a big a, Nate. A, yeah, he draws a great strip called Big Nate, and a few other people. Is that I don't editorial really, cartoonist? I don't from really the, know, from but the I look Bangor forward. Bangor Daily News. Is that Paul Pelletier? I believe so. And uh, a few other names like uh, Millie St. John. Someone named Lisa Truziani, who yeah, Lisa, might be married wife. to somebody here. Yep, she's <laughs> a storyboard artist for Barbie Comics. And uh, Scarecrow Woven. Sounds frightening. It's, I thought it was Scarecrow Oven. S- Scarecrow Oven. Oh, you're right. What did I say? Sa- Scarecrow Woven. Uh, well, he was woven before he was in the oven. <laughs> and uh, well, he became Sean, unwoven. Sean Moran, George Danby. All kinds of neat people. Yeah, so that be should fine. be a pretty good evening tomorrow night. I'm Quite. looking forward to it. Yeah. That's first Friday, 5 p.m. on? Yep. Yep. All right. I don't it's get out much, so this is a big event for me. <laughs> well, Mort's limo's picking me up about 6. That's that's uh, convenient. It can be a little tough to park down there <laughs> on the uh, oh, might first have, Fridays. Might have to take the helicopter. Though I do know that the uh, <laughs> the metro is free on first Friday night. So Woo-hoo! There you go. That's always good. I won't have to cheat my way in with a fake... Uh, I didn't fake know they had a subway system in Portland. Yeah. No, <laughs> I didn't know that. Keep digging. <laughs> Keep digging, you'll find it. <laughs> Keep digging my own grave over here. Uh, okay, so now um, you've done some film work. Now I, I remember, you know, kind of dating it that back it was an uh, adult way film b- store. back in the day. Yeah, well, we'll skip that part. <laughs> uh, there was a. Didn't you do something with called the Ultimates? I did. In fact, mm-hmm. yeah, that was pretty wild. I was a mere teenager. Then been in New York for long. Sold a TV pilot that we shot and uh, one of the actors in it became uh, later became a famous comic book artist and Academy Award winning uh, screenwriter Dan Klaus and he was our teen lead in it at the time. I love his work. Yeah and uh, yeah we so we sold the pilot but it didn't get picked up as a series and it was about some teenage rock and roll superheroes called the ultimates yeah so so what like happens the ugly to family it? remember that the yeah, ugly sure. family yep. i thought that was great yeah it was another sh- that was a strip that dan klaus and i did it that was your idea wasn't it mort well, it was, and he it was, was just working he was just working for you i think yeah i was writing it and stuff yeah. sure <laughs> mort, so. mort came in uh, and helped me about 25 years ago on a project that my wife and i uh, were uh, shopping around uh, it was called budget funeral home Ach, so <laughs> and, uh, was it that long ago? He, Mort Jeez. breathed new life into that project, you yeah. could say. More zombies. More zombies, huh? So, all right. So you were actually the uh, editor-in-chief of Cracked Magazine. Exactly. And that, again, I was a very young age in New York, and that was a super gas because... How, uh, how did that happen? I mean, being a young age like that, how did you become editor-in-chief of Cracked Magazine? He had a gun. Well, uh, 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 <laughs> well it was funny. I, I got hired first just as a consultant because the magazine had just been sold and they had this really old unfunny guy running the magazine and no names no names and i soon found out he was ripping off the artists ripping off the publisher reusing old artwork from other magazines and pasting on crack's name and so i, I got him booted and uh so that meanwhile they were looking for another editor-in-chief and i s- just put the books out by myself without telling him and then Ultimately, I was like, hey, you don't need anybody else. I'm doing it. And they were like, oh, okay. Because I was like, you know, 24 or something, so they didn't think I could do it. But we put out dozens, a couple dozen books a year back then. You and Cliff Mott were really uh, like a team back then. Our director, Cliff, was great. And I got to work with legends of the comic. John Severin? Oh, yeah. There were like a lot of cartoonists then who were really old, like in their 50s, that couldn't get work at Marvel and stuff that I grew up on. Stanley, yeah, no, he was, he was getting work. Okay, <laughs> but like you know, Steve Ditko who created Spider Man and Gene Cole and yeah, what, what is it with you and Steve Ditko? Oh, we're I... we're mates. But the thing was, that was the first person I called when I had the job was Steve Ditko, and said, "You want to do some work?" You could, he actually picked up the telephone. He booked. He was there within half an hour at my office with with art samples. Like I needed to see art <laughs> samples. And stuff. But like I said, it was you really. You should tell great. people who Steve Ditko is, well, Mort, he, because he some of the people. created Spider Man and Doctor Strange, along with, you know, Stan Lee gets all the credit, but he was the actual artist, Ditko, that came up with all the cool. Yeah, so this designs. is a collaborative art form. Yeah. You have writers and artists. Yes, and then tracers. And the writers <laughs> get all the credit. <laughs> yep. And what, what are tracers? 
no inkers. That's a oh, uh, derog- derogatory. It's way. nothing wrong with tracing. Wally Wood <laughs> thought it was good to uh, trace. Uh, uh, What's the uh, saying? Uh, if you don't draw it, if you can trace it, don't trace it, if you can s- swipe it, yeah. don't swipe it, if you can photostat it or something. <laughs> Xerox copy it or something. <clears throat> he was a brilliant genius. Yeah. Wally Wood. He was a mad artist who really just burned himself out and. Like late in his career, he said, because he'd do beautifully detailed artwork, and late in his career, he's like, if I could do it over again, I'd draw, like, Peanuts. Peanuts? Charlie, pa- oh, Charlie Schultz. Charlie Peanuts. Schultz. Oh, Peanuts. I'm sorry. Peanuts. My hearing is terrible ever since the accident. Yeah, okay, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have the headphones on. Huh? I think I actually might be older than Wally Wood was when he... Oh, uh, easily. When his life I think ended. you're older than everybody. Yeah. Though. Well, ever died. I'm glad we brought that up. <laughs> My wife is thinking of uh, does age matter in this business? Yeah, um, I think it does just to the degree that, you know, a lot of the only editors if they find out how old you are. Yeah, it's like the editors they want the hot new kid and and also they pay them less and stuff. So it it really has been since I've been in the industry. It's like if you've been in comics for 20 years, they don't want to know about it. But when you. you were an editor, you were always throwing money at people, exactly. paying them much more than they were worth. Well, we used a lot of That's why I liked working for you. Yeah, we used a lot of veteran <laughs> artists and also cultivated a lot of Did you what veter- artists. veterans of Foreign wars or what kind of veterans? Comic artists. Oh, veterans of that. Huh? But we also like gave uh, Peter Bag. You know, did hate that I gave him his first uh, yeah. published work because, well, first professional work because we were all pals. And I love hate drinking in the lo- Lower East Side and everything, and like Rick Alter got who is another great talent. Th- thou shalt not have any got no other artist <laughs> named Rick before me, pal. <laughs> <laughs> you want to ride home in your limo? <laughs> <laughs> or do you want to walk with a broken leg? Uh, so, uh, well. so we got I love a, his work too. Rick Altergott is a great cartoonist. Yeah, it is. Doesn't I mean, get the recognition that he deserves. True. Uh, that strip that he did about that uh, th- that guy in his doofus. Yeah, that doofus and that what's his what was his sidekick's name? Oh, no, you had to ask uh, me. Henry Hotchkiss oh, yeah, or something yeah, like that's that. That's exactly who it is. Yeah. He was great. You, could, you folks uh, listening to this, you should Google that. It's great. Great strip. Very yeah. funny. You guys and, are uh, probably the encyclopedias of, of we this know, type of knowledge. It's, we know more about comics than... Uh, anybody who's interested in comics or, anybody or illustrating should come down to this event, I would say, tomorrow yeah. night. That's yeah. right. You even can't if shut you hate Mort comics. and I up once we get going. Exactly. <laughs> even if you hate <laughs> comics, come by and heckle us. So, so what, what's the what's the uh, the state of the comic book industry right now? That's what we want to know. Uh, uh, I mean, it seems like it's going state. through technical change. Better than ever. Better than ever. Online is uh, yeah. It, it's it's hard to say because uh, my my criticism is you can only get comics in comic shops for the most part, and I think that's limited its uh, availability to like when we were kids you'd pick them up at any store and Woolworths and all that stuff whereas now you got to specifically True. go into a shop and and also it's all limited to superheroes for the most part now whereas back then they used to have westerns and romance so I think there was definitely a wider audience back then comics were selling in the millions whereas you know now if they can if they sell a couple hundred thousand they're real happy and if they can sell ten thousand they're happy so it's a different world, even despite the fact that well, they you know, raise the, the, the prices. Movies. So if well. it, if they sell ten thousand and they all cost uh, twelve dollars and ninety five cents a piece, yeah. um, but what about sp- psychoanalysis? Uh, did you read that when you were the comic up? book? Yeah. Well, after I grew up, because mm-hmm. it came out in the fifties, so I didn't see it. Did that help at all? The comic? Yeah. No. No. I'm still hanging out with you, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got a point there. Uh, uh, this is great. So Must we be got desperate. That's Rick Parker right there, and we got Mort Todd here, who yep. are uh, going to be t- down at the Maine Historical Society tomorrow night for uh, First Friday, and they're having a, a grand uh, soiree with a, uh, lots of uh, Maine-based artists yeah. and, and a lot of work being displayed, and mm. including at WMPG's own Lincoln. He actually does a show oh, here. Oh, no kid. No, that's great. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know that. Mm-hmm. And uh, y- if if anyone comes dressed as a moose or a lobster, you'll uh, get some of Mort's original art. <laughs> no. I like giving away other people's <laughs> original art. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, here's a question. What's what is the uh, the Golden Lobster Award that Mort won? Oh, that what, was, what that was, was that? That was for a documentary I produced. Uh, it was uh, called The Diabolical Super Criminal, and it was about this uh, photo comic series from the 1960s in Italy 
where uh, it, like in the rest of the world outside of America, they, they've done photo comics and they use actors. And a lot of these actors are also in films and TV. So uh, this was an Italian produce, uh, an Italian director approached me because I have the rights to the character. And so we did this great film where he tracked down all the original actors from, from the photo comics and it's hilarious. It, it's, it's, like I said, it's in Italian, but it's subtitled and hoping to get it dubbed sometime. But, but it's so much fun to hear all these actors talking about running around in skeleton suits and <laughs> women in their underwear and blowing up things and hanging off buildings and stuff like that. Wow. Now, is it, is it available anywhere? Uh, only in Europe right now. It's only on PAL, not, you know, not in our format. But like I said, I'm probably going to want to see that it gets released. But I do have a series of the, fo the original photo comics out in English for the first time because they were printed in Italy and Argentina oh, and sorted. Spain, everywhere except America. And there's a big worldwide cult following. And I got those on my website, Mort.com. I had no, com. no idea that Mort was such an interesting guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, me neither. No, that, that's that's an international s star. Well, you know, that's the <laughs> advantage of the ch technological changes. Yeah, yeah. You can just go to your webpage and you can see a lot of this stuff yep. and, and probably order some of it if you're interested. Order all of it, please. <laughs> <laughs> Make the checks payable to cash. <laughs> So, all right, now, Rick, what, do you, what have you been up to nowadays for, for um, work? Well, if I tell you, I'll have to kill you. <laughs> now, I don't like to talk about things that I'm working on because it kind of let, it's, lets the air out of the balloon. Yeah. If I was to tell you what I was working on, it would, it would make me less inclined to go ahead and work on it some more. Since I told you already, <laughs> well, that makes I like sense. people to be surprised. Well, um, I like to be the first one that's surprised. What about actually. some recent stuff you've done that's out now that uh, you don't have to worry about? What have I done recently? Video? Gosh, didn't you do uh, that Neil Gaiman thing or something? Oh yeah, that's true. I, I've been. Um, I got to letter a great book that's a graphic novel uh, adaptation of uh, a story by Neil Gaiman that won uh, the Newbery Award. It's called The Graveyard Book, and uh, it's adapted by uh, a wonderful artist, one of our great artists, uh, Pete Craig Russell of Kent, Ohio. Uh, <laughs> National Guardsman, if you're listening, do not shoot Pete Craig Russell, please. And um, what have we did? The, a story by Lois Lowry, who's from Maine. Uh, the name of that is the, uh, I can't think of it, one a great book. Uh, Lois Lowry's most famous book. My wife's favorite book. I can't think of it, but I'm old, folks, so it's okay. Is it something about blueberries or ducks? Um, I can't remember the name of it. They made a movie out of it, actually. Anyway, we adapted that as well. Nice. And nice. Um, let's see, I've been working for uh, Josh Bayer, a New York uh, a writer and artist. Who, uh, his work is published by Fantagraphics, and the name of his books are All-Time all Comics. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of great stuff in there. Actually, it was a lot of fun to work on, and uh, I don't know exactly what it was about it, but it was I guess it was just li like something I'd never seen before, and uh, my theory is that that's what people want. They want to see something new, something they've never seen before, and uh, I, would, I would say uh, check out All Time Comics, great stuff. Beautiful coloring by uh, Matt Rota, who is an illustrator whose work is all over you know, the New York Times and all the other uh, big magazines. And newspapers, unlike Mort and I, whose work only appears in uh, subway walls. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, that's uh, those are things I do for for money. Right and, now, uh, I do other things for fun. Those are things I, the fun things I can't tell you about. Well, I can understand that. I know uh, to qualify it, uh, Mort and I, we went to high school together, and he was always right, do it, doodling, drawing, always. I mean, in is that kind of how you were as growing up, always just yeah, drawing? Yeah, nobody wanted to play with me, so I had no <laughs> other choice. I, I really wanted to be liked by other kids, but, um, you know, I grew up down south, and uh, to be popular in the south, you had to be uh, uh, big and strong and dumb. And uh, Well, it was the 1800s. So. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. All right, where did you grow up? I'm from Savannah, Georgia, okay. and uh, I was lucky that there was always uh, a lot of... Uh, paper around my house because my father worked for the railroad and he worked in the in the telegraph office and when the when the telegraphs would come in the big machine would uh, print everything out on a roll of paper and then when the paper would get low 
uh, the color would turn pink, and that was the sign to change the roll of paper. But when you changed the roll, you, you took out the roll that was not empty. There was plenty of paper, so he brought that home for me to draw on. He was too cheap to actually buy me uh, you know, uh, rolls of paper. He also gave me the backs of his... Uh, uh, in those days, uh, if you had your shirt uh, laundered and starched, it would uh, be folded up nicely, and there would be a piece of uh, cardboard with a nice white surface on one side and kind of a cardboard gray, pick, uh, gray surface on the other, and I used to like to draw on those. And uh, my mother and father were both artists, so, I mean, they, they weren't professional artists, but they had a lot of artistic talent, and they were very uh, encouraging of uh, me. And... Um, I would just say that I drew pictures in school, and that was the only way I could get the kids to pay any attention to me at all. And I could make them laugh. But sooner or later, they just, you know, they turned their attention to other things, and uh, I was left alone to my own devices. So you had a lot of paper place. and a lot of matches. When had a lot kid. of matches. That's not <laughs> a good a combo. <laughs> Somebody's coming in, and he's wearing a ski mask over his face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's Daddy G. He's up at five. Daddy G's here. <laughs> Well, so anyway, uh, yeah, I like to draw and uh, discovered that, you know, that's what makes me happy. We should all find something that makes us happy and do it as often as possible. Now, do you, just, do you still just draw or is, it is, you just sit down is, and watch TV and uh, grab a well, piece of paper and start I believe, drawing? I don't believe in watching TV. And, uh, I don't believe in watching TV or listening to the radio when you're drawing. I think, hmm. I think when you're drawing, you should be uh, focused 100% on what you're doing. I'm the opposite. I got the TV on, the radio on, a burger sitting next to me, a bottle of whiskey, and probably about 15 other things. <laughs> <laughs> and that's while, I'm, I'm, that's while I'm writing and editing and drawing all at the right. same time. Well, I'm, I've got and responding to Facebook. And certain people can Everyone you know, does multitask, do, do things I differently. <laughs> I can only focus on one thing at a time. Well, and uh, I know I read that you had a, you, you drew these huge, uh, layouts of people's heads <laughs> like just and it, did it come from like doodling and uh like getting the ink out of a pen and uh that turned into these huge collages of many people's heads. oh that thing yeah yeah i thought that uh well people's uh, it's fun to draw people's faces and that's the part that uh, most people are interested in look at if anybody looks at a drawing of uh, somebody they usually uh, look at the uh, face uh, because they want to find out what's going on uh, with that particular uh, character, what they're thinking and feeling inside, you know, what their emotional state is. And I found that, you know, once I figured out how to draw people's faces, you just, I, I couldn't stop. It was addictive. It was like you were creating all of these, all of these characters, and uh, they were just, you know, they were there. And uh, it was it was great. It was like having it was like if you like having kids and you were somebody said, OK, you like having kids, have about 10,000 kids. You can have 10,000 kids. Yeah, there's like and 100 you can sell, people on it. You can sell some of these kids to people, too. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes people pay for these things. Yeah, it's a market for it. That's right. interesting. There's if you go down to the university's our, uh, campus center, there's actually a, something that reminded me of when I saw that work is but they do it in a like group art setting. And each people mm. just keep drawing heads yeah. around in this heat. They keep yeah. growing and growing of these different characters. That's a, called a, Mort will like this because it's called a, uh, Exquisite Corpse. That's what they call that. And it's just where a, an artist hands the draws something and hands the paper to another artist yeah. and they draw something. Well, it's what we would do at bars back in the day. A lot of us artists is you take a napkin and fold it over and someone draws the top part of the body or the head and... You flip it over so they don't see what the other side is, and they finish it. So then you open it up, and it's like that's disgusting. I couldn't have done that because I don't like to. I don't like to drink or do anything else when I'm drawing. I wouldn't have been a very fun person to have. But uh, anyway, it is a lot of fun, and uh, folks at home can do that too. If you have kids and you're looking for something to have the kids do, hand them a folded up napkin and a. And a ballpoint pen, or you would you say a Sharpie marker would be better for well, something Well, if it's like on that. a napkin, it's going to soak up too much. The if marker. we mention Sharpie, every time we say Sharpie marker, we get $5,000 from uh, <laughs> the Sharpie folks. <books. laughs> sharpie, 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 Sharpie. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, it's fun to be an artist. I, I recommend it for everyone. We it's therapeutic, any... I'll tell you, because a lot of times when I'm working on other stuff, 
you know, get stressed out on, you know, if I'm on a well, God film knows, production. God or knows we need therapy, don't we? Yeah, and I, I don't. Sometimes I don't get to draw so much, and when I do, it's always like, ah. Oh. It heals the wounds. <laughs> you know, that would be a good. Uh, I think to have tattooed somewhere on my body. On a wound, maybe. Yeah, on a wound. <laughs> uh, anyway, we don't need any more certified public accountants or lawyers or <laughs> TV repairmen. Yeah, With well, the, there's, there's not many more uh, TV repairmen left. Right? <laughs> but there's still one in Portland, but it's almost a disposable uh, society. Yeah. I saw a typewriter repairman in Amherst, Massachusetts. I thought if anybody needs their typewriters repaired, people don't even know what typewriters are, though. <laughs> and so the people who listen to this are going to think, what's a typewriter? Um, it's, it's a machine that makes... Uh, Type. You could type on it. You yeah. can write with type. Yep, you can right. do that. Well, we got uh, more Todd and Rick Parker here. Uh, I think we're going to wind down here, but let's talk about the event once more. Sure. Where are you going to be tomorrow night? The show is called Kapow. We'll be at the New York New New York Historical Society. No, New we'll York. be at the Maine Historical Society located at 489 Congress Street in beautiful downtown Portland. <laughs> it's also First Friday, so there will be hundreds of artists exhibiting their works uh, to the public on the street in the snow and uh, Mort and I are only two of a dozen artists professional artists who will be at this show yeah there's going to be come come and meet them all they're all Maine based so that's right Maine cartoons they're all based based in Maine (laughs) which is pretty cool so fun people Maine comic artist in the shows February 2nd to March 31st uh, 489 Congress Street in Portland well thanks you guys for coming down and hanging out with us thanks for having us you know I hope we haven't disappointed your listeners to yeah. hear some if, some of your noisy if we, tunes. If we haven't, he can have us on again next time. Oh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> why not? Right. But if you uh, just joining us, of course, you can go and listen to this archive uh, at 5.01 p.m. on our right. WMPG.org I'm gonna webpage. I'm going to share that on Facebook. Yeah. Tune in, <laughs> and, and it's right there again. Beautiful. Yeah. So thanks, and the uh, Appreciate it. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. And hope to see uh, millions of people there tomorrow. Yeah, that that should be good. Let me, uh, <laughs> you know, see we have any music queued up here. Now, now back everybody. to your regularly scheduled now back programming. To, we you got to uh, resume your normal activity. Let's see. We're going to hear uh, City Kids right here from the Pink Fairies, and then uh, I'll be back to talk to you again. But all right, I'll see you guys later. Thanks.